What's going on, people? Machiavelli Mills TV. So look, y'all, there is a clip going around social media of Chicago rapper 600 Breezy approaching and confronting Charleston White about his disrespect of his friend King Von, right? Um, 600 Breezy is from a, a, a hood that's clicked up with King Von's hood, the O, and they're friends, and he has a problem with how Charleston White has been disrespecting King Von and talking about King Von in all these interviews across social media. And these interviews are doing a hunt. 100,000 views and so on and so forth, right? However, there are people who don't like this energy from 600 Breezy. They feel like he's wrong for directing this energy to Charleston White. They feel like this this energy should only be given to other gangsters, not other dudes that's out here just talking about the situation, right? They feel like 600 Breezy is wrong for addressing an a older man about this and he should be only addressing gangsters. I'm going to tell you all this, man. That is the furthest thing from the truth. Civilians who talk crazy, who talk recklessly, who talk disrespectfully get checked too, right? Um, in life, sometimes, especially where I'm from, right? I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and I don't want you all to think that I'm biased simply because I'm from Chicago. I simply am a man who, I'm an equal opportunist person. I, I recognize when people are wrong in certain situations and how they can go about things differently. Sometimes street dudes also have to respect civilians who talk recklessly and talk disrespectfully, who talk crazy, who talk cash stuff. Sometimes street dudes have to remind those civilians to stay on the sidewalk and keep all the noise down. Calm all that noise down, bring the disrespect, bring the disrespect down a few notches and calm down. Street dudes have to remind civilians who talk crazy of that, right? Because sometimes the civilians start to forget that they are not active street dudes. They're not gang members. They're not out here sh sh toting pistols and acting wild and acting crazy. And they have to calm their disrespect down because there are people who love those individuals going around, living in this world. And you can't be just talking foul and talk crazy without expecting repercussions. I'm a person who has followed Charleston White. You know, during this time, he's been popular, popular on social media, on YouTube, so on and so forth. I've agreed with a lot of his sentiments and things that he said pertaining to the black community, pertaining to a lot of the, the bullshit that goes on in our community, the ignorance that spews throughout our community, pertaining to um, other cultures exploiting the black community and black culture in general, right? I've agreed with those topics and things that he said. However, I also have disagreed with his disrespect to a lot of people who are no longer here, right? And how foully he talks about these individuals. He doesn't do it in like a way where He's just calmly, he's, he's criticizing them and so on and so forth. He's talking about them heinously, right? And when I hear Charleston White, Charleston White has always been an advocate of not dissing the dead, right? He believes that a lot of the dudes in Chicago going around dissing the dead are absolutely wrong. They're heinous and they're foul for it. And I wholeheartedly agree with Charleston White when he says that. I believe that Chicago rappers talking down on the dead it's disrespectful, it's disgusting, and it needs to stop. It needs to be something that is no longer a thing in Chicago, Illinois, in, in music in Chicago, Illinois, right? It got popular during the 2012 era, during it when drill, when drill culture, drill rap uh, was booming and popping, but I feel like it's something that should have been stopped a long time ago, right? However, Charleston White is no better than the rappers when we hear him dissing the dead consistently, right? I've heard him diss dead, dead rappers like DMX, Nipsey Hussle, Mo3, and King Von on a regular basis, right? And he has to understand that just because you're old and you're not physically imposing, everybody not just going to ignore you. Everybody not going to just let the things that you say slide and roll off their shoulder and sleeve. Everybody not going to be as forgiving, right? Some people are going to remind you that there are consequences and repercussions for, uh, for talking crazy, just like there are consequences and repercussions for gangbanging, right? Because Charleston White always says there, there are consequences and repercussions for game banking, which is wholeheartedly 100% truth, right? But there are also consequences and repercussions for talking disrespectfully about people who are no longer here to defend themselves, right? And you might face those consequences and repercussions from their family, from friends, from people who really love and care about them that had genuine relationships with those people, right? And Charleston got to understand he can't throw rocks and expect no repercussions to come behind that, right? You can't throw rocks and hide your hand. That's not how the universe works. You can't talk crazy about folks and throw stones. He's throwing boulders at people. And expect no repercussions to come behind that. You got to stand on that. 
Homie, when you disrespect people, you got to stand on it, right? And I have no problem with Breezy telling telling Charleston White how he feels about him disrespecting his homie, right? I, in fact, I expect him to do that, right? As a dude that's an active street dude or, or a former street dude or whatever uh, 600 Breezy aligns himself as, uh, you know, he still says he's a street dude that raps or whatever. I expect him to check somebody who's disrespecting his dead friend. Now, I didn't want him to hurt Charleston White. I didn't want any blood to be shed, which it wasn't, right? Uh, but Breezy spoke his mind, and he got it off his chest about how he feels about Charleston White dissing Vaughn and how it makes him feel. Nobody was hurt. Nobody was killed. No blood was shed. But Breezy got his point across, and Charleston White heard it loud and clear, and he respected it. You know, and Charleston got to understand that he can't just be talking wild and crazy about any and everybody and think it's just not nothing going to come behind that. I don't believe, I believe Breezy, I respect Breezy for not touching that man. And honestly, if Breezy would have touched him, Charleston White would have called the police on him. And that came out of Charleston White's mouth. Because a lot of people are like, oh, Breezy didn't check Charleston White. He just talking. He talking to him calm and polite. When we saw the video Charleston White put out, Charleston White admitted that Breezy did check him, right? He checked him. He came to him with that energy, letting him know he don't like it. He don't respect it. He don't honor that. And he got a big problem with what he been doing on social media. And Breezy told that to Charleston White. And Charleston White voiced it that, hey, that young dude came to me. And he was, he was with all that. He was with all of that. And he pressed me up. He checked me for sure, for sure. And I was looking nervous. He said, and Charleston White said he was nervous. He was like, man, it's a big old dude. that looked like he played football at Jackson State. Because for those who don't know, Breezy, about 6'4", about 6'4", about 240 pounds. He's a bigger dude than what he was back in the day. He's about 240, solid, right? And I'm not saying that makes him tough or nothing like that. But Charleston White saw his size, and he saw that Breezy was physically imposing. And then it kind of startled him and had him taken aback. And this is coming from Charleston White. He admitted that, right? Um, so for people who say denying he got checked, he did, right? And I'm not saying that I'm proud that he got checked or nothing, but Charleston got to understand all that talking crazy is always, it, you can't just, and again, he's not just voicing his opinion on the things that happened. He's calling them all type of names and all type of foul, wild stuff. And I'm like, bro, you can't be like, you know, you probably could meet people in this, like that, those, those people, friends and family, you got, you might have to answer for that. I don't want no harm done to Charleston White, but he got to understand that he can't just be talking crazy, you know, but I don't want no harm done to the brother because I agree with a lot of things the brother says, but I disagree with a lot of the things that he says and how he approaches certain situations, how he approaches certain topics, right? Um, now, they were in neutral ground in Mississippi when Breezy uh, checked Charleston. They were in Mississippi. Breezy been down in Mississippi for a while. I'm assuming he liked it down there. He got family down there or something like that, or maybe he just liked the atmosphere or whatever, right? But, you know, Charleston got to understand, he can't be talking about people on the internet heinously like he's invincible, right? B because he thinks, I think Charleston thinks because he's an older man and he's small, he can say what he want to say and just get all the monetary gain from it, right? Because, honestly, everybody in his YouTube platform is out for monetary gain. Charleston White helps children and helps them stay off the street, and he does, right? And I salute that and I honor that for... The things that he talks about, he verbalizes a lot of the um, the things that young black men need to hear. But other on the flip side of that, he he verbalizes a lot of things that young black men don't need to hear for how he talks heinously about DMX being a crackhead and all type of like, you know, just foul, disrespectful things. And people are like, oh, you don't like the harsh truth. No, he got to understand when he talks that harsh truth, as he calls it the harsh truth, it's people that's going to come up to him with that energy, right? And everybody that, that he's talking about is not 150 pounds soaking wet and just only rely on guns. There are some physically imposing dudes out there in the world who are going to approach him and tell him, I don't like what you said, homie. You need to tighten that up. And he got to, and he, and he understand that. And Charleston realized he was in some, some mess when he said it, right? Regardless of what, I know Charleston white fans are going to be in my comments talking crazy. You know, oh, you just hating on them and all of that. And Charleston ain't scared of this and scared of that. Charleston was very nervous, and I can see it in his energy when he made the video, right? The brother's in the video dropping his blunt every single way, losing blunts everywhere, talking about, hey, man, we didn't know, man. That, that dude was big, man. He big old chest on him, big old arms, long arms, tall, big old dude. I'm like, man, 
I don't know. He said, I was glad when Breezy said, you know, I'm not going to touch you. I'm not going to do nothing to you. And I'm not going to get on that because I'm weird and I, I'm in my people's house. I don't, I don't want to disrespect their home. That's what Breezy was telling Charleston White. And Charleston was like, man, I'm glad his brother was a nice fella and got good manners and stuff because I didn't want no part of that. Now, brother, I'm looking at Charleston like if you don't want no part of that action, you don't want no part of that smoke, you got to change up the way that you talk about people and talk about you know, individuals across social media. You can't be just talking foul and talking crazy and reckless and think ain't nobody going to ask you, you know, what's up with all that you be talking, right? And um, this is the thing too, man, because there are some people who don't like Breezy. They don't like what he stands for. They don't like the crew of people he's associated with. Y'all know what I'm talking about when I say the crew of people, you know, the black disciples in Chicago, the OTF and all the crew and all of that. They don't like who he's associated with. Um, or there are also some people who don't really care for Chicago street dudes because of Chicago's reputation that has been built up from media, from um, social media, from, from Instagram, from the music and stuff like that. There are a lot of people who think that Chicago men think that they can, that it's a lot of people that think that Chicago street dudes believe that they can believe that they can bully anybody from any other place. Right. And you have a lot of individuals who, when they get the one up on a Chicago dude, any chance they get, they're going to poke their chest out about it because they believe that Chicago people think that they're the toughest dudes in the land and all of that. Because Chicago uh, is the epicenter of a lot of the, uh, has been has been the epicenter of, the, of America's focus on game banging for the last couple of years since the drill movement has emerged, right? And you got a lot of other brothers who feel like, oh man, Chicago dudes think they tough and all this and all of that. And, and it's a lot of people that want to prove, who are eager to prove that Chicago dudes aren't tough as they say they are. And so they always trying to get the one-ups on Chicago dudes or they like to see Chicago dudes um, get, some, they always like to see people get the best of Chicago street dudes because they don't like that people think Chicago dudes are invincible, right? Um, for example, when, when King Vaughn got killed, I saw a lot of Georgia guys sticking out their chest and beating their chest saying, we don't play that in the South. Chicago better understand, we don't play that down here. We don't play that down here. We 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 with all of that down here. You will get gunned down down here. This ain't Chicago. We ain't scared of y'all Chicago dudes, right? And I, I saw that and I'm like, wow, you got people really bragging about a young dude killing another black dude because they want to show that they got the ups on Chicago and Chicago ain't tough and all of that, right? And as a Chicago man who went to school down south in Mississippi, I understand that there are some Chicago brothers that come down there and think that they are the toughest dudes in the land. But it's a lot of other dudes that ain't even on that type of time, right? It's Chicago dudes that respect the law of the land wherever they go, as Breezy does, right? Because he's been in Mississippi for a while. You ain't heard him down there trying to bully on no Mississippi dudes, right? He was uh, he got a song called 6 a.m. in Mississippi. He, he respect Mississippi, right? But you got some dudes that don't, that ready for to, to clown Breezy for this whole scenario and situation. Oh, he ain't do nothing to Breezy. Oh, I mean, he ain't do nothing to Charleston White. Or he needs to be directing that to Lil Tim and all this and all of that, right? Listen, y'all, Lil Tim is nowhere around for them dudes to get to him at all. They nowhere around and nowhere to be found around them individuals. He wasn't even looking for Charleston White when it happened. When it happened, some dudes brought him to a spot to buy some weed or something like that, and Breezy happened to be there, and then Breezy saw him and told him how he felt. It wasn't like Breezy was out there hunting for Charleston White. They're like, oh, Breezy needs to bring that energy to, to Lil Tim and all this. He needs to bring that energy to his ops in Chicago, and they're only saying that because they don't like Breezy or they like to see other dudes, street dudes from Chicago, uh, get get put in bad situations or scenarios because they don't like the energy that some Chicago dudes put out or they don't like the energy that other people from suburban parts of America give Chicago dudes because a lot of the suburban areas give Chicago dudes this nod as being the toughest dudes in America. Chicago kind of, right, at least not not right now all the way, but like a couple of years ago, Chicago was having a reputation, I believe, that maybe Compton had in the 90s. So a lot of people want to prove that all y'all Chicago dudes ain't tough like that or whatever, whatever, right? But nonetheless, man, um, I see people like they're going to say, oh, well, he didn't check King Yella and he ain't check Billionaire Black when he seen him in the mall and they be disrespecting each other dead homies in Chicago all the time, right? And I'm going to say that. They're going to say, oh, Breezy didn't have that same energy. I'm going to say this. I don't believe that Breezy took an L in that situation when he ran into uh, King Yella and Billionaire Black in the mall at all either because Breezy was by himself. And honestly, by a lot of the street codes, Billionaire Black and King Yellow should have beat Breezy when they saw him. And they didn't, right? Breezy didn't deny his affiliation. He still has stood his ground and stood on what he is and who he and what he claims, right? And both guys, I mean, they they talked, they talked and had words back and forth. 
they stood on what they stood on. Breezy stood on what he stood on. And it was that. And they left. Right? But it wasn't no, oh, I'm scared, I'm scared, or nothing like that. And Breezy didn't get beat up. And, and you know what I'm saying? And he was by himself and he stood his ground. He didn't run. He didn't hide. So I don't think Breezy took an L in this situation. It's just a lot of people don't like Breezy, so they're ready to give him out an L. But I believe they're ready to hand an L to Breezy. But I believe he was right in checking Charleston for what he said. Because Charleston has to realize that you can't talk crazy and recklessly without there being repercussions to it. Right. And I'm glad he didn't hit that brother. They had a conversation. He voiced his opinion. He got off his chest about how he feels about um, Charleston talking about his homie and all these interviews that are so popular and doing views. And he told him, hey, I don't like that, man. For real, because one, Charleston ain't in the streets game banging. He ain't one of their ops and enemies. And he's talking foul as if he is one of the ops and enemies the way he's talking about Vaughn. And they looking at they looking at it like, hold on, fam. You say you a civilian and you gonna call the police. Well, Charleston, you got to stick to being a guy who's going to call the police and stop trying to antagonize other individuals and talk about people who are no longer here, especially if you if you say you're an advocate about uh, you're an advocate for people to stop dissing the dead. But you dissing the dead crazy, just like you one of the Chicago rappers. You ain't talking about you would kill him and you would dig him up and do this and that. But you talking about him heinously and foully and all this and all of that talking crazy and disrespectfully, wildly disrespectful. So. You know, like, Charleston got to understand, he got to cool that out, fam. He got to cool that out. And I think he realized, because in that video he put out on one of, on his channels, or maybe his channel, some channel I saw, he was visibly shook. He looked nervous. He was dropping the blunt everywhere because he didn't know that. I think he didn't feel that sometimes a real situation can occur where he, where somebody could have the ups on him and he don't got nothing. He don't know. He, he has no way to respond to that. He has no way to protect himself, Right. And he realized that stuff can get real. And he got to understand that and calm that energy down, man. He has to calm that energy down because that game banging, I mean, that type of stuff he be talking is just way too reckless. You know, he got to understand. He got to tone that down because his brother's out here that ain't playing. But I'm glad Breezy didn't touch him and hit him because Charleston White was going to call the police on him without a doubt. And Charleston, if you're going to call the police on brother, stop antagonizing brothers to talk crazy about people foully. That's not okay. You know, but that's my opinion on it. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Machiavelli Mills TV, I'm out. Peace.